Hey there, good morning everybody. It is Sunday, the 31st of January, 2021, 8 o'clock in the morning, and we're here to cover another couple of psalms before the Lord's Day begins and church starts. As you know by now, I record these on the day prior to Sunday. My Sundays are really busy, and so this just helps me to uh, make them a little bit lighter of a load. Sundays begin around 6 o'clock in the morning, and we shut down about 11 o'clock at night, and there's very little downtime throughout the day. But you know what? I heard a guy say I'd rather burn out than rust out, and I agree with him. I'd rather stay busy in the work of the Lord than on the sidelines wishing I could be involved, or worse yet, caring that I'm not involved. So uh, here we go. Psalm 71. Let's pray and I'll give you the background and we'll do two of them today, 71 and 72. Father, we ask your blessing on our study. Please give us the mind of Christ as we read and learn here. Speak to our hearts, edify us, encourage us, rebuke us if necessary, please in Christ's name. Amen. All right. The background for Psalm 70. One is Adonijah. We spoke of Adonijah yesterday. We talked about how he tried to steal the kingdom of Israel away from Solomon. David had chosen Solomon to be his uh, successor to the throne. Adonijah had different ideas, however. He wanted it, and so he even tried to steal it away, and uh, Solomon finds out about it. Solomon ends up putting Adonijah to death over the attempted coup for the throne. And here, David is writing, and his heart is heavy because of Adonijah and his actions. Verse 1, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Boy, that's a great verse to meditate on. You know, the devil likes to make us doubt. The Bible tells us in the New Testament that God is not the author of confusion, but Satan sure is. He always casts doubt upon God's word and upon our obedience to God's word and our trust in God's word. For instance, when Eve was approached by him in the, de in the, in the garden, uh, the devil said to her, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat. He was trying to cast doubt. Uh, someone put it very well this way. Satan always puts a question mark where God's put a period. And so he says, let me never be put to confusion. That's a good prayer request, I'll tell you. God, help me to not be confused by the devil when he's trying to confuse me, trying to throw me off track, trying to get me to doubt my choices that I've made in faith. Leads me to another statement that I was taught as a young Christian, never undo in doubt what you've done in faith. So let's say God's called us here 17 years ago to start the church. And uh, I'm sure, no doubt, more than once in those early days, especially in my mind, I thought to myself, is God really in this thing? <laughs> was he the one behind it? Or maybe was I the one behind it? And uh, those doubts, he'll plant those seeds of doubt. So David's asking him, asking God, please don't ever let me be brought into confusion. Verse two. Deliver me in thy righteousness, and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me, and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. When things are uneasy, when things are confusing, just cling to the rock. Cling to the rock of Christ Cling to the word of God. Don't let anything sway you from it. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope, O oh Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. 
For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together. And this isn't David saying, hey, when I get old, please don't forsake me. He's saying, Lord, I'm old. Please don't cast me off. Please don't put me aside. Please continue to use me. By the way, I don't care how old you are, how long you've been alive. Uh, I don't care what your health is like. God has something for you to do. And I'll tell you, when when saints of God get to their older years, they have more potential, more value, more wisdom, more experience that they can help younger Christians with than any of the rest of us. And so those of you who are older saints, don't give up on doing something for God. I'll tell you, the, the two greatest needs in the church today, guaranteed, are these two things. Number one is prayer. Those who will spend their time in prayer. Those who are younger tend to stay busier. They tend to stay more active. They tend to do more things. And then as a result, they sometimes neglect prayer. They don't give prayer the time and attention that uh, is that it deserves. So those of you who are older, who are less active, less busy, maybe you're retired now, you've got time on your hands, use that time to pray. Uh, use that time to, to go to God on behalf of the people in your life, the people you love, the people who need your prayers, the people in your church. Spend some time going to God on their behalf. And then in terms of encouragement, boy, telephone calls, letters, maybe even a small gift. It doesn't have to be anything pricey. It doesn't have to be anything uh, that, you, you know, out of your ability to, to perform, but just a little token sent to someone's house, uh, or maybe you even take it there. But don't pull out of the, the work of God. Prayer and, and uh, encouragement, two of the greatest needs in the work of God today. Verse number 11. Uh, this is speaking again about the, the older folks not having God turn their back on them. The enemies saying, verse 11, God hath forsaken him. Persecute and take him, for there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste for my help. Let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation, and thy power to every one that is to come. Oh, I love that zeal that David has, even in his older years. Let's read that verse again. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, he doesn't mean when I get there, he's saying when I'm gray-headed right now, oh God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto this generation. You know, one of the jobs of older Christians is to show the strength of God to the younger generations. See, God isn't done with us uh, just because we retire from our job. God isn't done with us just because we apply for Social Security. God isn't done with us just because our health isn't what it used to be. We have a job to do until God decides to take us home to glory. And so again, the encouragement for you older saints, find something to do to fulfill the work of God in your life. And again, the two greatest areas to perform, you know, you're not going to be able to come up to the church and help us put a new steeple on the roof of the building, but you can pray as we try to put a new steeple on the roof of the building. You might not be able to get out there as we were this morning, four degree temperatures, going door to door through the snow, passing out tracks, but you can pray for us as we go and pass out those tracks. Verse number 19, thy righteousness also, O God, is very high. Who has done great things, O God, who is like unto thee? Thou which hast showed me great and sore troubles, shalt quicken me again, and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. 
Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. I will also praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth, O my God. Unto thee will I sing with a harp, O thou holy one of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee and my soul which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame that seek my hurt. There's a psalm written by an older David, reflecting on his life and his continued purpose until God brings him home. All right, let's go to Psalm 72. Different author this time. You know, many, many of these psalms were written by David, but here's one written by his son Solomon. If you remember the story from 1 Kings, God comes to Solomon and he says, Solomon, I'm going to grant you anything that, excuse me, anything that you ask for. You, you tell me one thing you want, pardon me, <laughs> and you tell me one thing that you want, and I will give it to you. You just say the word. And Solomon says, God, you've given me the task to lead your people, to lead your nation, and I don't even know how to begin. I don't know how to come in. I don't know how to go out. I don't know what to do while I'm there. God, if you're going to grant me any one request, my request is for wisdom. Give me wisdom to lead your people. And so God said to Solomon, you know, you could have asked for riches and I'd have given you riches. You could have asked for fame. You could have asked for honor. I would have given you any of those things. But you asked for wisdom because you weren't asking for your benefit. You were asking for my benefit. You're trying to lead my people. And so you asked wisdom so that I would help you lead my people. You ask for something that would benefit not yourself, but me. Because of that, I'm going to give you all the other stuff too. And so he promises to give Solomon wealth and fame and notoriety and all of that. So this psalm is written by Solomon, and it's about the request that he made for wisdom from God to lead the kingdom. Verse number one. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness, and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people, he shall save the children of the needy, and he shall break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and the moon endure, throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. In his days shall the righteous flourish, an abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence and precious shall their blood be in his sight. And he shall live, and to him shall be given the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him, continually and daily shall he be praised. There shall be an handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains, and fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon, and they of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth. His name shall endure forever, his name shall be continued as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him, all nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, of, Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things, and blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. 
All right, so there's a psalm, beautiful, about God establishing the throne of Solomon, uh, all that Solomon will be used of God to uh, bring forth the poor that he'll be able to help, the needy that he'll meet the needs of, and how God will bless his kingdom, and then the wealth that will come with it that will benefit the people, and uh, so forth. And it goes on to finish praising God. Now, a very unusual verse you may have noticed there at the end, the prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. And that's because the next section of the book of Psalm, Psalm 73 through 89, these, uh, what is that? Uh, that's uh, 16 psalms roughly. These are just going to be psalms of praise written by Asaph. And so these are, are songs that were sung, and uh, there's not going to be a lot of background behind them. Uh, we'll be able to give you a, a bit of the era of time in which they're written, but they're predominantly psalms of praise that uh, God gave to Asaph to write down for his people to sing. So not exactly the same uh, emotion, the same turmoil and struggle, although there'll be some of that present. This is just going to be a lot of praise and, and worshiping the Lord for who he is. All right, that's all we got for you today. Busy Sunday, as we said. You want to turn tune in uh, to Lighthouse Baptist Church on the Facebook here, and you can find our live services at 10 a.m. and 5.45. 5 p.m. We're wrapping up our uh, month, the Family Emphasis Month, where we've been talking about the ingredients of strong families. And so I hope that you'll tune in and watch if you can't make it in person. If you can make it in person, come see us. We'd love to have you. But thanks for watching this morning. God bless you. Have a great Lord's Day. We'll see you tomorrow at 10.